thing. <coughs> Who are you? If you've used what I'm going to suggest finally to you that you teach, and that is all these things I've said are just ways of teaching rhetoric. If you've taught them the triangle, please do teach them the triangle. Then they already know the word persona. And so you can say, what is your persona? What is this mask you've worn as you have written to me? And how do you hear that? How do you hear that persona? They can find the words that make them sound a certain way. Give them that with their own stuff. And then they'll be much more likely to be able to do it with other things, other texts that you want them to read. Um, one thing I haven't said is, but it's, I hope that it's evident here, but it's not too evident because I lost the other picture of Faust building, is the whole idea of juxtaposition, putting one thing up against another. A text and a visual, two texts, two pictures, a movie and a, you know, putting two things up, my voice versus your voice, your first paragraph and my first paragraph. Juxtaposition is one way of stimulating inquiry, of understanding context, of thinking about audience. It's one of the best strategies for learning that I know about. Because it mirrors the way that people learn in general. People learn because they start with, I know this, and it's sort of like this thing that I don't know. They juxtapose two things. That's how they that's how all of us learn any new thing. It's how I'm learning tag on violin. <laughs> I'm a, I, I play the piano. It is so unlike it. But the only thing I've got to help me is listening to other people, watching them for sure. But the main thing I've got is that I know how to read music. I know the scale. I know what I've done on the piano. So even though it's like completely different, it gives me a way in, do you see? That's the way that students learn. That's the way we all learn. So OK, finally then, I'm asking you to teach rhetoric. I'm asking you to teach the triangle. But don't just stop with the triangle and delineating it in its several parts um, in the texts that students read and their essays. Consciously teach these strategies as I've described them, inquiry, audience, context, consciously teach them um, that help you develop, help them develop the understanding of how rhetorical moves get made. Make students conscious of what they're doing when they do history, they're learning context. Or when they do research, they're figuring out about subject. Or do character studies, they're understanding persona. Teach rhetoric consciously, but teach it organically as a part of all your instruction. Think about, for example, how a lesson in grammar is a lesson in audience. Um, and that's the way to teach it. It opens up everything about the semicolon. Um, if you can teach that as part of what you do with an audience. Teach rhetoric in this way, and students will meet their college teachers expectations, but mostly their hopes. Students will come knowing that all the occasions they're facing in college are rhetorical occasions. Opportunities for them to read others and themselves to succeed in the many new challenges and the many new opportunities for developing their literacy that await them. <coughs> it's 11 o'clock. Thank you so much. <laughs> probably do to break again, but I just wonder, I know, and I've, and I've lied and told you I was going to be finished right now, but would, would anybody like to ask a question or make a comment? Lynn? I love what you started with about the curiosity and I'm thinking about Tim Alicia. When I asked the faculty for ideas about student readiness, this was Tim's main idea, was students have to have that intellectual curiosity. And I love how you started with that. I would say that readiness has much more to do with habits of mind than it does with skills or content. It's habits of mind we're trying to develop. And I think uh, that's what we mean, or at least that's what I mean when I think of readiness. You have to think.
Yeah. And when you talked about relating this to history and bringing it to the local level, we have the Gulf Coast writers right outside who've written many things on local history that's available Wonderful. to pictures and information that could draw history teachers into it also. Yeah, gets right to what students are interested in. You start talking about the train station at Gulf Coast Rush, you're not going to have people fall asleep. Mm -hmm. You're going to be saying, who's going to get down to the train station this afternoon? First. And look at that. I mean, do you know, I mean, if you can pull it that way, then you've got a way of making it big. Uh, a broad, a broad. Other comments? Yeah, see, I wanted to relate one thing that I did with some <laughs> students, and this was at PJC. Uh, we were talking about the Korean War. We were kind of working on that. And what made it real 